Angela, let's start with Alibaba. In fact, that question that Steve just posed for them, I'm not sure if you heard that conversation. Do you think the worst has passed for Alibaba as far as regulation is concerned? Well, I believe so. I mean, but as you uh, pointed out, the, the firm student, uh, was required to submit a ratification plan to the authority last month. Uh, we, we, there hasn't been any disclosure about what exactly are in the ratification plan. So we might expect more clarity from uh, the investment team maybe later in, in the call tonight. And um, the firm was also required to submit an annual compliance report uh, to the authority in the next three years. So they expect the authority will keep a close eye on, on the firm's compliance uh, in the near future. As you point out to Angela, exclusionary behavior so this, this ongoing investigation, or the one that just concluded here, focused on just one type of that. And there are, might be others, other types of exclusionary behavior that might catch the attention of authorities. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and what we are seeing in the industry? Is that happening? And do you think that's going to be the next one? Well, I mean, um, and obviously this is the first time Alibaba has been officially, officially investigated for antitrust violations. Um, but um, that doesn't mean the firm will be immune from antitrust problems forever. Remember, Google has been investigated in uh, EU for three times. And so, and given the fact that Alibaba has, has been found to have a possessive dominant position in e-commerce, I, uh, I believe that there could be more uh, potential problems later down the road. Like, I mean, there could be all sorts of exclusionary conduct that a firm do, right? I mean, interoperability issues could be a could be a major concern. But at the same time, it also depends on how the firm will react and comply. And as as we just talked about this compliance um, report, I mean, maybe the firm will offer to uh, rectify this behavior in advance, so that might save it from uh, further regulatory intervention down the road. Angela, just switching focus to Ant, of course, and uh, Alibaba has a 30% stake in Ant Group. They have had and focused, had their own regulatory focus, of course, particularly in terms of their relationships with banks and their credit business. And in some valuation estimates, you're looking at a tenth of the previous valuation for that business. Where are they in terms of their discussions then with the PBOC? Is there clarity for Ant? Well, I mean, we were all expecting uh, Ant to be com converted into a financial holding company. But what is less clear is the PBOC's requirement to decouple inappropriate links between um, Alipay and, and other financial services like microlending, because that will potentially have a very big impact on Ant's business. Um, it looks to me that that requirement, I mean, it's not entirely clear to me what is the legal basis of that requirement because it, it does look to me like an antitrust remedy, but obviously Ant hasn't been investigated for any antitrust violation. And even if Ant is found to have a dominant position in online payment, um, that doesn't necessarily mean the firm has violated antitrust law. So we need more clarity from the regulator and it remains to be seen how the firm will um, try to adapt to the regulatory demand. And underpinning all of this is the question of data. Do the authorities here have the legal structures to be able to force these companies to hand over their data? Do we have more clarity on the kind of structures that Beijing is putting in place to hold that data? Well, data is a very complex issue, right? I mean, on the one hand, we can understand um, the, the authority may want to create more level playing field by asking companies like N and Tencent to share the data with their competitors, but then they do run into a problem with consumer privacy because from a consumer standpoint, they may not want, they probably don't want their data to be shared among many uh, you know, platforms. And um, so there is an inherent tension here between data protection and um, you know, uh, competition policy. And it remains to be seen how the government will strike that delicate balance between these two competing policy goals. And as you know, the Chinese, uh, Chinese legislature is uh, drafting a personal information law, which is expected to be promulgated later this year. And this law is quite strict with data protection. And there are only limited circumstances where government can request the companies to transfer data. So it remains to be seen how this will play out. But I do think that data protection is a potential obstacle for the government to um, pursue some of these antitrust uh, problems.